All right, today we're going to be talking about acceleration. Um, before we can really talk about acceleration, we need to discuss a few more things with velocity first. Velocity and acceleration are directly related. Uh, but to clarify a few things with velocity, uh, we can have instantaneous velocity and we can have average velocity. Instantaneous velocity is velocity at that instant. Um, so an example of this might be on your trip to Omaha, you have to slow down to go 35 miles an hour through West Point. At that time, 35 miles per hour would be your velocity. However, your average velocity might be how long it takes you to go the entire trip. You might average 60 mile an hour on the entire trip, uh, but that doesn't mean you're traveling 65 miles the entire time. Some of the time you're maybe going 35, some of the time you're maybe going 65. So usually average velocity is over a much longer period of time. Uh, instantaneous is usually at that instant. We can find that by uh, looking at tangent slope on a distance time graph. So once we know uh, what our velocity is, we can look at acceleration. Acceleration is just the change in velocity. So the acceleration would be uh, velocity at time 1 minus time 0 divided by time at time 1 divided by time 0. Remember that velocity is already meter or already a distance time measurement. So if we take a distance time measurement divided by another time, then we're going to get a double time unit. So you can always identify acceleration by the double time unit. So such as meters per second squared or feet per second squared or something along those lines. Uh, we can actually, if we graph a velocity time graph, so we have time along the bottom, velocity up the y-axis, if we look at the slope of that line, that's where we can actually find acceleration. Acceleration can be either a positive, negative, or a zero value. So we could be speeding up, which would be a positive value. Slowing down would be a negative acceleration. Or if we're staying at a constant speed, then our acceleration is zero. Uh, we have a couple ways of symbolizing acceleration. It can be an A, it can be an A with an arrow over it, and whenever we do uh, acceleration, uh, we should always represent it by a purple arrow or a dot if there's no acceleration. So let's look at a problem using acceleration. Here we have a driver going at a constant speed of 25 meters per second. He sees a child run into the road. It takes the driver 0.4 seconds to hit the brakes. Uh, the car then slows to rest, slows at a rate of 8.5 meters per second squared. How far before he stops? So, I started out by drawing our pictorial model. Keep in mind, I'm a science teacher, not an artist. So, we had the car uh, at three different positions. So, here's where he sees the child. Here's where he starts applying the brakes. Here's where he eventually stops. We know that when he sees the child, we're going to set that as our distance zero. That will also be our time zero. We know at that time that he's going at a constant speed of 25 meters per second. And since he's moving at a constant speed, we have no acceleration. So we can actually see acceleration is just a dot at time zero because he's not uh, accelerating at all. Our velocity is constant. At time one, that's where the driver hits the brakes. So you see the child here actually physically applies the brakes here. We don't know exactly what distance that is. We could do some calculations. We're not that far into uh, forces in motion yet. In the next chapter we'll be looking at determining what the distance and time and velocity and everything is. So we could calculate if we wanted. We know that the time is 0 0.40 seconds because I was told how long until we hit the brakes. Our velocity is still 25 meters per second because he hasn't applied the brakes. Nothing has changed between here and here. There's been no acceleration. But at this time, we started out going 25. Now we're going to start to decelerate at 8.5 meters per second. Should be squared. So we're going to start to decelerate now. Uh, at time 3 here, uh, we don't know the exact time that it would be. Uh, and the question asked us for the distance. So we don't know those first two values. But we know if the car is going to come to a rest and stop so it doesn't hit the child, that its velocity is going to be 0 meters per second, and its acceleration will end up being 0 meters per second squared, because once it's stopped, it will no longer be moving. So uh, we have time and distance on the graph up here, or on the line up here. Velocity is steady until the event where we touch the brakes. Then we have 
uh, slowly decreasing velocity. Our acceleration was zero until we actually touched the brakes and then our acceleration was in the negative direction. Notice how velocity and acceleration are in the opposite direction. Uh, if velocity would be getting faster, if we were speeding up, then acceleration would be in the positive direction. Since we're slowing down, acceleration is in the negative.